We have the pleasure of having uh, Dr. Declan Rowan here with us today. Uh, you heard mentioned in the presentations that we are also participating in, in certain research, but also the applied side of things. And uh, the word integrate, and the integrate project was mentioned several times. Uh, Dr. Rowan is, as mentioned, uh, one of our facilitators, but also part of that team that is working towards the change along the integrate project. So I'm dying to hear exactly what is going to be conveyed here coming from the field and showing us exactly the potential that we do have uh, when we start working together. Dr. Rowan. So, thanks so much and that's a, a real pleasure uh, for me and I'm really delighted to be invited to come and speak uh, today. And, uh, I'm really delighted to come and be able to speak about the Integrate project and, and the impact that it's had in our local community and, uh, and beyond. Um, so I'm a family doctor. I work in Petawawa. It's a rural community about two hours up the Ottawa Valley away from Ottawa. Uh, of about uh, 16,000 uh, um, uh, people in the, in the community. Uh, I work uh, in a family health team with seven other family physicians and some nurse practitioners uh, and other uh, services that work along with us as well. I also have a role with the Regional Cancer Program and Cancer Care Ontario, as well as the family physician leads uh, in the Champlain region of Eastern Ontario as well. So uh, the Integrate project was um, a palliative care project that was um, administered through Cancer Care Ontario. It ran over three years. Uh, it was funded by the Canadian Partnership Against Cancer, and uh, CCO um, ran the project over the three years, and it's still being uh, analyzed, and the impact is still, uh, is still being looked at. Um, it was held, it, th there were four different centers, both in a cancer center and four primary care centers in three different regions across the province. And uh, our team in Petawawa led the uh, primary care setting in the Champlain region in, of Eastern Ontario. And there were three other primary care teams involved as well. So I'm going to talk about what our experience, some of the results from the, from the uh, Integrate project as a whole, but also what the impact has been for us locally as well. So what is the Integrate project? So many people uh, from Pallium will recognize this slide. Uh, and it's really, if I was to sum it up, is how can you actually practically implement this? How can you implement this early approach to palliative care, how can you get that to work on the ground in the clinical settings, and in cancer centers, and in our case, in primary care settings? Is there a model that could work and be adapted to actually implement what is a great theory into practice, and, and what does that look like? Um, so uh, this model was developed by uh, many people at the Integrate team, including Dr. Sandy Buckman, who is the provincial lead uh, um, as well, and I have great thanks for his support in making it a success for us as well. Uh, but basically, there was two main arms to it. One was an educational arm, which involved all the people who were getting involved with um, the Integrate project doing LEAP training, and it was a LEAP core, a two-day LEAP training course. We were also provided some written resources, uh, as well as some online resources as well. And I'll show you those on the next slide. But the second part of it was, um, was the implementation, the model of how you might go about it. And it was really about early identification. How do we go about identifying people early? And for the pilot project, we used the surprise question. Would you be surprised if someone were to die in the next six months to a year? And if you answered no, and they had other markers and signs of decline, then likely they warranted a palliative approach to care. And I know there's been some criticism about the surprise question and, and stuff, but, but basically it's about is there a way of identifying patients and, and people who warrant a palliative approach to care? And oh, I'll go forward. And if, if there were, and once you identify them, what are you going to do about it? And it really was very simple. You know, it was basically the same as we would do uh, as we're trained on the LEAP courses, assess them, figure out what their needs are, try to do as much advanced care planning and goals of care discussion with the family, and involve home and community care services early on. And then what's the impact of that? And how do you get that actually going in a systematic kind of way within a practice? So that's the model of how it was to be. These were the, we got these tools both in a printed form and, and on a website, and they're still available. So if you look, Google palliative care tools, CCO, Cancer Care Ontario, 
uh, this page will pop up and it'll walk you through the process for identifying and, and the tools that are associated that we used throughout the course and throughout the project. So I'm just going to talk briefly about some of the results. As you can see, uh, in the primary care arm of this project, we had a large number of people do the LEAP course. 145 people over the two-year course, two-year duration did the course. M most were family physicians and most were or, or nurses, but you can see there were many other um, uh, health service providers also involved. So we had pharmacists on the courses with the social workers, dietitians, some administrative uh, people came on the course as well with us. Um, so there was a, a, a very diverse groups on the course. When we identified the people who warranted a palliative approach to care, there weren't really that many surprises, actually. Total number was about 294. And if you looked at what that meant for percentages, roughly speaking, we identified about 1% of our practice, some a little less, some a little more. So if you know, a family physician had, when I give this talk to family docs, I say, you know, you're probably going to identify about 1% of your practice who'd want, warrant a palliative approach to care. If a 1,000 patients, who are those 10 people that you'd, you'd know? And there's probably a good chance you already know them because you're probably already seeing them, you know? So, but what they looked like on this project was that they were generally older. The median age was 79, uh, but mo mo mostly over 75. Um, surprisingly, I think for many people, they found that the majority of people in the primary care setting didn't actually have cancer as the cause of their palliative, their, their palliative care needs. 44% had cancer, but most had other medical issues. And in fact, the, the most common phenomenon was that they had multiple medical conditions, right? Mo two thirds of them had three or more comorbid conditions. So they're older with lots of medical illnesses and lots of burden that goes along with that, right? So that's kind of what they looked like. And then the results that came from this project, well, um, Generally speaking, they, they were very, very good. The patients that were identified had higher rates of palliative care visits in their home. That's fantastic. They had less ICU days. They were less likely to die in hospital when compared with, with, uh, with a matched cohort. So that's really positive from this project. The other nice uh, thing about it was that the uh, clinicians felt that they, two thirds of the clinicians felt that they had sufficient training to provide the care after the course was done. And also that we talk, Dr. Pereira talked about the confidence in, in providing the care, and many people felt that they, they had in, in, increased confidence in, in doing these advanced care planning discussions and goals of care discussions as well, so very positive. There were comments made about the team building aspects that came along with this project as well, and patients and their families were interviewed using the caregiver voices survey, and they felt as well that the project and the implementation of this project was positive overall too. So really very positive results from it so far. But what I want to talk a little bit about is not just the numbers. I really want to talk about what the impact that this Integrate project and implementing this palliative approach has meant in our community in Petawawa and we're close to a town called Pembroke as well. So really what's been the ripple effect of this? And we're going to go back to the LEAP course first. Uh, we started off the project with a LEAP core, and um, Dr. Pereira, we were looking at Dr. Pereira actually to be one of the facilitators on our course. But before we started this project, and one of the reasons I wanted to get this up and going where we were at, was that although we all think of palliative care as a team um, sport, if you like, it's a, it's a, it involves teams, up where we're at at the time, really it was individuals doing their own thing with very little contact with each other and very little uh, integration with home care services. So we were very deliberate in trying to build our LEAP course as not just an educational um, two days, but also a team building two days. So we got all the members of our family health team in, all the clinicians, but we also invited many people from the community, the community pharmacists who provided palliative meds, the home care nurses, the care coordinators for home care in to learn with us but also to then form and get a sense of a team building through those couple of days. And it was really uh, quite successful. Um, the Champlain Regional Palliative Consulting Team, who we look for advice on complex cases, did the, consulting, did the facilitation for us and really became part of the team as well. And since this course, we've had the palliative care coordinator embedded in our family health team and visits us every week. 
The second thing that we did was not to talk just about the personal commitment to change, but we looked at what are, as a team, what are the issues that are arising, the quality improvement plans and what are the things, the issues that we could work on afterwards as a team to try and make us continue to work afterwards. This is actually a photo of the actual uh, sheet from the course itself. Uh, and we've worked on many of these uh, as a team afterwards. Um, the only thing on it, somebody wrote down MM, and to this day, nobody can still figure out what MM is. <laughs> so avoid acronyms, that's another tool, tip. But, uh, but we've worked on many of these after the, after the course, and, and it's been, uh, been really quite successful. Um, I mean, I'm going to talk a bit about advanced care planning because that was probably the biggest um, quality improvement initiative that we tried to implement. And a couple of tips that we came across to try and help with it. One, we use OSCAR as our electronic medical record. And one of the things that we try to do is, well, how do we first identify who these palliative patients are? How can we pull up the list of it? And we used a, an ICD-9 code, this code that we plugged into the disease registry, so we could suck out a list of all our palliative care patients and see, have they had discussions done? Have they had the correct, uh, you know, just review their care and, and look at, at them a, a, as a population? The second thing that we worked really hard at was trying to make it easy for our clinicians to do the documentation embedded in the same workflow practices that they're kind of used to. So we developed, we often use these things called e-forms, but basically it's, we, we embedded it in a way to make it uh, as an easy checklist, but also an aid memoir and an easy way for them to document and, and, and make it easier for people to do the advanced care planning discussions and, and involve them with the, with the, uh, with the care. And we had pretty good success. About 78% of our patients um, had actually advanced care planning discussions uh, documented in their chart, uh, uh, which we thought was pretty good. The two most successful things, and they seem really obvious after the time, and I have to t thank, actually, we had a nursing student working with us, and she had the most fantastic um, um, uh, suggestion. It worked fantastically well for us. One was, why don't you just put an alert on the chart, you know, so when they come in, we thought, well, that sounds easy, you know, but, but it was actually a little more complex, but it, it actually worked really well. But the second one was a very simple thing, was, was put a speak up um, um, uh, postcard in the mail to the patients prior to their appointment and say, we think this is important. Why don't you just talk to us before you come in? And that had the biggest return on investment for us. Very simple uh, technique, and it worked really, really well. The next uh, ripple effect that this has had on us in our area, uh, locally, so in the Pembroke, Petawawa area, we're trying to get our family health teams and clinics and, and family physicians a bit better organized. And, try and form this thing called a, a medical neighborhood. We're a bit better linked and kind of make our care a bit more streamlined and not be so isolated, both to, to improve care, but also to support the group of family physicians who've kind of become more isolated over time um, from each other. And really, when we bring people together, we have to try and find a way for us to work together. What's the reason for us to actually want to kind of do some of this? And we all agreed the palliative care and this integrate or the palliative care approach was really the glue that bound us initially. Is there ways that we could actually do this better? And that we hope then will lead on to us performing a much more successful palliative care, uh, a much more successful medical neighborhood. The second, uh, we've also included the local regional hospital uh, in Pembroke. And uh, it's really uh, been uh, really rewarding for me to see that um, the palliative approach to care has been much better um, implemented. Um, my heart warmed when I got a discharge summary which mentioned a palliative performance scale on a patient. That made me feel good. Um, the other one was uh, when, when patients were actually being treated you know, with palliative medications for their heart failure and, and talking about palliative approaches in the discharge summaries and stuff. So, so it's... Uh, uh, I think we we're having great success in terms of implementing it locally uh, within our hospital, but also within our, uh, within our group as well. Uh, regionally, in the eastern part of uh, Ontario, in Champlain, uh, the Integrate has been endorsed by the main um, healthcare uh, organizations, the hospice Champlain Hospice Palliative Care Program, 
the regional cancer program and even the local LIN. And, and, uh, the three organizations have come together to seek funding to spread this across the region. And we have eight community teams waiting for the funding to be approved we, um, uh, so that we can, we can spread this out further. Um, and, and we recognize that how it is implemented will be different in each community, because you know, every community has their own ways of kind of doing things. But the common, we feel that the common foundation for forming this will be the LEAP core course, you know, to get people um, uh, together both, and, and, and to put it together in the same way as skill building and team building. Um, there's been a lot of talk about culture here today, and I think that's been the key lesson for me with this, you know, is that um, this whole project has not only improved patients' care, but for us in our area, it's been a real shift in, uh, in, uh, in us developing a palliative care culture in the uh, Pembroke Pedal area. So thank you.